Okay, so today we got something a little different. We went up to St. Augustine, Florida. Um, we are here at uh, Commander Shellfish Camp. I am so excited for today. I love clams. They actually farm their own clams here on property. I'm, I, I'm out of my mind with this. There's fresh carrot cake. Doesn't sound exciting, but I know this carrot cake. I know who made this carrot cake. I promise this is gonna be awesome. Let's go and do this. All right, so we are here uh, doing our world famous rapid fire segment um, with Chef Matthew Gilligan. You, sh you ready for this? Yes, sir. Chef, are you sure? I think I I'm say ready. it every time. I don't know if everybody's really ready for this. All okay, right, anyway, this. so let's let's kick it off. Um, so the ten year old Matt, before you were chef, before you know, before you were uh, out there uh, doing anything interesting at that age. What did you want to be? Uh, well, actually, I grew up in this industry. My father owned restaurants and managed restaurants in Boston, Massachusetts. And I literally was helping my father do inventory at five years old. And then he bought a restaurant uh, when I was 10 years old. And I was actually doing prep in the mornings on the weekends. And after school, I had bus tables. This is all I've ever known. It's the only thing I've ever done. So. You so my next question was, what got you into the restaurant life? So you were born in it. I was born into it. I don't know anything else. It's oh, wow. uh, literally at my father. Uh, I, I, I've worked on and off for my father my entire life. We owned a restaurant together in Jacksonville Beach. So I mean, I've literally, I don't, if I, if I wasn't cooking, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. So, so what, what age did you actually start helping in the business? 10 years old. About 10? Yeah, I was literally, I was helping do prep. Awesome. And I mean, I even like, I cut my thumb really bad. I still have a scar from when I was 10 years old. I was cutting frozen calamari at my dad's <laughs> restaurant. I mean, yeah, it's just, it's all I've ever done. I have, a, I have a similar background to what you just stated. And, uh, and I, yeah, I, frankly, I don't miss it. I mean, I like being on this side of it yeah. um, and being in distribution mm -hmm. um, and being around the food, the foodies, the, the chefs, and you know, I love that. God bless you and, and, and everyone else in the industry for what you do. It's, it's hard work. Yeah, there's no question, that's all I know. So if you weren't a chef, if you weren't in the industry, what would, what would you be, what would you do? I wasn't in the industry. Honestly, there was one thing I, I, I always, I was like solving problems, puzzle solver. Honestly, the only thing I could ever have thought of doing as a child was when uh, X-Files first came out. I was kind of obsessed with Sculler and Moldy, I, er, Scully and Mulder. Right. And all I could all I could think about was becoming an FBI agent. And that was the only thing I, you know, just chasing aliens or whatever, you know, crazy stuff. You could still chase aliens today. I, I know, mean, I I, they're popping up everywhere, all over the world. The government's uh, putting out photos of them, and no one's saying anything. It's like be very careful. <laughs> um, so you're in the kitchen. You're surrounded by gadgets and tools and whatnot. What 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 tool could you not live without? Well, I mean, honestly, the most useful tool in the kitchen is obviously your hands, uh, but uh, just my good old chef knife. I just just need a standard chef knife. It doesn't have to be a $300 Sean or Global. It doesn't have to be Wustoff. If it is sharp as hell, I'm happy. I need my hands and I, may, I need my knife. That's literally, that's about it. And also a fork. A fork comes in very, 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 very handy, especially at this restaurant where we have to peel about 500 pounds of shrimp a week. Wow. Fork, just. Yeah, so I'd say my hands first, knife second. A fork, third, Good and a fork for not what you would normally do. It's very, very useful tool. Yeah, no, seriously, like that's uh, that's insightful. Um, I wouldn't have known that. Yeah. Uh, so scale one to ten. We know what's going on with the uh, with the industry at large. Yeah. Um, how hard is it for you to find staff? Uh, one uh, out of ten, I'd probably say a nine. It's uh, it's a multitude of factors going on. You've got people that are just. They were never really, they didn't have passion for this industry. And a lot of that's what you get when you're 18, 19, 20, first trying to find out what they're doing in life. And a lot of times you get them in as a dishwasher and they get hooked. Now, these kids, they can go work at Target or go work at Bucky's in the air conditioning and make 15 to $16 an hour. It doesn't teach them anything whatsoever. Whereas 
four, I could just get them in here. I could, I could groom them really well. They'd be 17, 18 years old. They couldn't wait to get on the line. That doesn't exist anymore. I turn line cooks into dishwashers. Uh, I bring, instead of bringing in line cooks, I bring in a, a badass chef. I mean, it's, you have to adapt. And the hardest thing, it's not only like finding people, it's retaining because everybody's a vulture right now. Everybody's trying to pick and steal everybody oh, from you. So you gotta like, have to combat that. You gotta take care of your people. It's not like it is in 2019 where, you know, for the most part, the staff would kind of kiss your ass. Now you gotta really care about, you really have to show that you care about their feelings and how, what they're going through and what's going on in their life. If you're not taking care of your people and not actually giving a shit about what they're going through on the line or outside of work, you're gonna lose people. Yeah, you're gonna lose them really quick, and you're gonna be in a situation a lot of these other restaurants are. They have no. They don't it's, have anybody. It's, it's a it's a it's a new dawn uh, of a new age in food service. And only the strong will survive. It, well, you know, I mean, uh, growing up, I'm you know getting older, and you know, back in the uh, '80s, '90s, uh, when I was coming up in the in the food yeah. business, there was um, it was rough, you know, in terms of how you were treated. Like a, a kitchen, nothing. the kitchen was one of the most um, you know, volatile, horrendous places you could be. Like you heard stuff in the kitchen. I don't think you would hear on a submarine somewhere, you know, oh, yeah. under the- uh, I mean, that grabbing you by your collar, nose to nose, yeah. and you just cussing you out, making you feel like nothing. And then you got to get back on the line and feed another hundred people. I knuckled up with a GM once in the middle of a dinner, sir. I'm not going to tell that story, but yeah, no, it's a whole, it's a whole and, different and world. And if you're like that nowadays, you might as well pack your knives and go home because you're not going to have a staff. True. You have True to treat story. people with respect. And I, I honestly, I appreciate that now because I was, I mean, I'm not bitching, but I got, whew, I got my ass handed to me, embarrassed, <laughs> just demoralized. Sure. Everything you could imagine, these, some of these chefs. So that's what makes you strong. I'm, I'm yeah. a proponent. I mean, you don't want to abuse anybody or, you know, bully anyone or anything like that. But you know what? You gotta be strong. Yeah, Twenty years of that shit will get you 20, tough. And now tough. I, I don't yell. I, I, I don't want. I don't want to get my blood pressure spiked because yeah. first of all, I start being irrational when I'm angry, and I don't want to get angry. I'd rather talk things out nowadays. You know, figure things out. Now there's a time and a place. You know, get the out of my restaurant right now. Right. Yeah, you got that. There's those moments that still happen, but now you just gotta kind of let things go a little bit. Like, hey man, phone, come on. Whereas before, it's like get. Look, we've we've all turned a corner. Uh, you hit certain plateaus in your life, and you and you um, and you learn how to do things differently. Um, I right, picture this: Metallica, Frank Sinatra, um, Mariah Carey, right? Which one of those names best, you know, describes your chef personality? Mickey Blue Eyes. I, uh, yeah. Um... I don't know, it kind of hits my soul. I love, love, love just jamming out some Frank Sinatra in the morning. All right. I keep things simple. I keep things clean. I like to just, just, just go with the flow. And it's just like when you got Sinatra going and you just you feel good. I mean, I, any of the Rat Pack, any of them going on. I mean, Talc, it's got a time in its place. That's for like when you're getting your absolute ass kicked on the line and you're just trying to get through it. Right, Carrie, I guess if you're like having a really sad day or something like that. But I mean, Sinatra. <laughs> I, had to give, I had to balance it no, out. No, no, I get it. I had it. to balance it out. Sinatra just, I, I feel it. He's so simple and classic. And that's how I like to do everything. Simple. I like to keep it so damn simple. And that's why this place is a freaking monster now. Because we just kept it simple and consistent. Keep it simple, stupid. I mean, it's it's probably one of the most overused phrases, yeah, but, but nobody, truest to form. But nobody actually does it. They always try to overcomplicate stuff. There's no reason to. Hashtag complicado. So listen, best piece of advice ever given. Do as you're told. Just do as you're told. You know, like in Forrest Gump, when he's talking to uh, his, he's talking to his officer, and he said, "Why are you in the army? I'm here to do what you, whatever you tell me to, sir." And he says, "That's the smartest answer I've ever heard. You must have the IQ of 140." Well, it's just your life is so simple. Your life can be so simple if you do as you're told. You do as you're told. Guess what? You did what you were told. You're not going to catch any hell. Hey, I might not want to do it, but guess what? Not my restaurant, not my say to not do it. So I'm going to do it. And if it doesn't work out at the end of the day, guess what? I did what I was told and I get to go to sleep without any bullshit. I, I love what I'm doing here with this whole show and the walk and talk. And I love it because you get to meet super cool chefs, super cool people, and you get, you, you get to see perspectives um, you threw me, I was picturing you for Metallica all day, yeah, right? Yeah. But you know, you, you never know what somebody's gonna say, you never know what their what their visions are. Chef, 
Thank you for uh, for being here for uh, for the rapid fire segment. Um, by the way, which is brought to you by Don Pablo Coffee Growers and Roasters. If you haven't tried that coffee, there's something wrong with you. Um, number one selling coffee on Amazon. Go check it out. You won't be disappointed. I guarantee. I promise. Let's promise. Chef, thank you very much. Um, we'll catch you on the other side. All right, thank brother. You. Thank you. Cheers. While the chef is cooking, I'll be enjoying coffee from the best coffee company on the market. Don Pablo Coffee Growers and Roasters. Find it on Amazon.com. Cheers. Got another segment of walking confessions. Come on, let's do this. All right, so, bro, you know, we have a history. We know each other. Um, you follow the show. This is walking confessions, right? So, we're going to get into kind of like horror stories of the restaurant life. Um, you guys are actually getting really busy out there. So, yeah. I want to make sure we kind of roll this quick. So, okay. give a. Uh, give, 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 you see, give yeah. the uh, give the viewers something. What's a, what's the taste of the restaurant life in your history? Well, ultimately, you know, I've been doing this for about eleven years, and in the last uh, eleven years of my career, I've had a couple of incidents where I've taken over some positions at branded hotels, uh, where I've walked in as a line cook, and they've asked me to step up in a in an executive position. Um, it's not always been pretty. There's always been some resistance. Uh, you know, I've lost half my kitchen and then some. Um, had to recover that as well as some uh, health department calls that were unnecessary, you know, when you lose people. Um, so, you know, it's been definitely a trial for sure. That's from, uh, that's because it's not typical still even today to have an executive chef who's a female. Correct. Right? I, I, I believe that. I mean, it's, it's becoming more common and, you know, people are stepping more into those roles, but I don't, I don't think that it's as common. As you know, I get into a lot of kitchens, obviously, and it's not as it is. It's getting more, thankfully, um, but it's still pretty. Uh, it's still lopsided. Right. Um, and I remember when you made that switch, actually. Yeah. And I remember your troubles, too. And I've had some really great people mentor me, some wonderful chefs. Um, I've, I've worked under uh, Michelin star chefs, uh, as well as uh, some local guys that have just really taught me a tremendous amount of uh, character and, uh, you know, got some battle wounds here. <laughs> Lots of battle wounds, which comes with, yeah, comes with the territory. Um, no tats, but, you know, that's kind of what that is. <laughs> that, to me, that's like a real kitchen tat right there. Um, steam, knife, you know, all yeah, that. Steam, Absolutely. Yeah. Brooke, you're wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for uh, thank you for spending some time with us. You're very welcome. We're gonna go jump into some food now, and I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah, let's clams. Go. I love them. I Plus. love clams, and you guys. We farm, farm them right here on our um, on premises. We have a clam farm that we do everything. Uh, I wish he was here to. It's okay. To explain it, but. We're gonna. I, I might get some drone. If the weather's a little shaky, I'm gonna try to get some drone footage of that. If not, it's a clam farm. It's awesome. You'll see the finished product. Let's go. Let's do this.
Call me Don Pablo, and 20 years ago, I discovered my passion for great quality coffee. Today, we're roasting excellent quality coffee that's rich, smooth, and very complex. It's a taste that's new in the world. Chef, like, this looks amazing. Um, I need you to explain what we're looking at. Well, you're looking at our um, clams that we that we farm right here on the premises, mm -hmm. um, and they're called our drunken clams. Clams. Um, so we saute those with our house smoked pork belly, our Trinity mix, oh, wow. which is peppers, onions, celery, and then a local citrus ale um, that we that we um, deglaze the pan with. Similar process with our shrimp and grits. We have a royal red shrimp that we put on top of it, um, as well as we use the same base um, with the house smoked pork belly, the Trinity mix, as well as the citrus ale. Um, this is our house smoked fish dip as well. We um, we use all of our we we have no waste, so we use all of our remnants of any type of fish that we have that um, you know we can't use. That's what you're making the dip out of. Yep, we smoke it here. Um, and then we have our secret secret sauce that we mix it with. Um, this is our house-made carrot cake. I've heard a lot about this carrot cake. <laughs> I mean, I've heard a lot about this carrot cake. Who made that? I made that. <laughs> Look, I'm sure it's uh, I'm sure it's delicious. So um, yep, it's it's a it's a pretty nice little recipe. Uh, I have to tell you, I had my first clam. It's awesome. Yeah. And I'm I can't wait to jump into uh, all of this food. Um, you guys are really getting busy in here. We and, are. Yes. And here uh, on the, you know, with Walk and Talk, we respect everything. Right. Right? We don't want to take up your time. No, thank you. Because you got guests. We've take got care. lots of guests. So why don't you Waiting. take care of your guests? Okay. And I'm going to take care of this food. All right. And then, you know, I appreciate you. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.